Hi, this is Margaret, and let's see what we can do to figure out some sizes of things. I have, uh, this is the PowerPoint um, Lecture 5 about calculations. Before I start this, I want to show you how these slides are set up uh, in case you haven't used PowerPoint before. So um, when you open a PowerPoint presentation, it'll probably look like this. And down at the bottom, there's a button that shows sort of a picture of small slides, thumbnails along the side, and then the big slide in the middle. And the reason I want to show you this is because sometimes I will leave notes for you in this notes field in the bottom underneath the slide. Uh, like here, I'm talking about the electrical code. If you are uh, having your slide cover the whole screen, you won't see those notes, but if you're in this outline version like this, you can see those notes. But I do want to have the slide cover the whole screen, so I'm going to go over to this button over here for the slideshow. And this button is a picture of a, you know, like a screen getting pulled down and you're um, displaying some slides on it. So I'll push that button. All right, so some calculations. Um, we're going to figure out things like, um, how many amps are going through a circuit. And that's really important if you're trying to prevent fire. A, a formula you can use to figure this out is called the power formula. And you remember that watts is, uh, is the way we measure power. So here's this handy formula. Watts equals amps times volts. What that means is, if you know the amps and you know the volts, you can automatically figure out how many watts. If you know uh, any two of these, you can automatically figure out the other one. Anytime you have a formula that has three pieces in it, like this one does, you can use math to figure out, like if you know two of the terms, you can use math to figure out the one you don't know. Um, but if you're not a math person right now, here's a shortcut. Anytime you've got a formula with three pieces, you can put them in a triangle. So uh, the, the two things that are multiplied sit next to each other in the bottom of the triangle and the other term goes in the top of the triangle. And what you do to use this triangle, you cover up the thing you don't know, the thing you're trying to find, and whatever is left that's not covered up, that tells you what to do. Uh, here's a line that's like a fraction line. This means divide. And the line here with the two, the amps and the volts next to each other, that means multiply. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So for example, let's say you know the watts and the volts, but you're trying to find the amps. With your finger, you just cover up the amps in that triangle, and you're left with a W up over the top of a V. So that means what you do to find the amps is you go W divided by V, watts divided by volts. If you're trying to find volts, you cover that one up. You're left with watts up above amps, watts divided by amps, that'll give you volts. If you know amps and volts and you're trying to find watts, cover up the W, you're left with amps and volts next to each other, so that tells you, okay, you multiply those. Amps times volts will give you watts. You often see these called not watts, amps, volts, but a lot of electricians will use these symbols. So instead of W for watts, they'll use P for power. Instead of A for amps, they'll use I for intensity of current. And instead of V for volts, they'll use E for EMF. I'm going to use uh, watts, amps, volts, but just be, be familiar with this PIE thing. 
Here's our next assignment. This is assignment four where we're go going to figure out, uh, we have four problems and we're going to figure out some things. And I have put this triangle diagram in here and I put it in here in both versions, the watts, amps, volts that we're going to use. But I also put the PIE in here in case that's what you're familiar with or in case you want to be familiar with it. So here are our four questions in that assignment. And let's go through these together one at a time. That first question says, how much current is flowing through an 1800 watt heater on a 120 volt circuit? So in other words, you've got a, let's say a space heater. It's rated at 1800 watts. And you plug it into the wall, a standard 120 volt receptacle in the wall, how much current is going to flow through there. If you're trying to find current, remember that current is measured in amps. So amps is what you're looking for. So with your finger, cover up that A. What you're left with is a W sitting up above a V, watts over volts. Okay, so now you know what to do. You're going to take watts divided by volts. And they told you here that you have 1800 watts. All right, so get, get your calculator. Uh, could be a calculator on your computer or on your phone. Um, get your calculator and punch in 1800 and then divided by 120, 120 volts. And there's your answer. The amount of amps is going to be whatever 1800 divided by 120 turns out to be. I won't give you the answer, but you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, so what? Well, let's say uh, you got yourself a space heater. And it's real common for space heaters to be rated at 1800 watts. So here's one. And you got yourself a, an extension cord at the hardware store, one of these uh, little lamp cord deals. They tend to be 16 gauge wire. The question is, can you plug your heater into that extension cord? All right, so we go to the electrical code. And the electrical code is about two things, keeping us from getting electrocuted and preventing fires. So in the electrical code, it's got tables that tell you how many amps you're allowed to have in a certain size wire. And if you looked it up, you'd find, all right, a 16 gauge wire is allowed to have 10 amps. And it's likely that when you bought this wire from the hardware store, it had that um, in a tag on the, on the cord. OK, so you can have 10 amps. 1800 watts. You plug it into a 120 volt, oops, that should be a volt, 120 volt outlet, you come out with an answer 15 amps. Is that okay? No, it's not okay because your extension cord is only rated at 10 amps. So what will happen if you plug it in? Your extension cord will get hot. And if you leave it plugged in, you could even have a fire. All right, let's go on to the next question. The question says um, it wants to know what is the power input. In other words, how many watts. It's a heater that's drawing 6 amps. And you've got it plugged into a 120 volt outlet, standard outlet, standard receptacle in your wall. All righty. What is the power? In other words, you're looking for watts. So that's the one you cover up. Cover up the watts. And you are left with an amps and a volts, an A and a V next to each other. And that's good because watts is amps times volts. So you're going to multiply amps times volts. They tell you you've got 6 amps and you've got 120 volts. So the wattage is going to be 6 times 120. And I'll let you calculate that. Here's the third problem. 
The question is, how much current flows through a 120 volt, 150 watt lamp? And you might be, this might be, uh, you know, one of those big flood lamps like you have in a big lamp in a living room. Some people have those. They're 150 watts, or they used to be before we used LEDs. Um, and it's a standard 120 volt circuit. And you might be trying to figure out, ooh, how many amps are you running through the lighting circuit in your living room? Are you, is your breaker big enough? So anyway, let's figure out how much this wire is going to be pulling. It wants to know how much current, so that means you're looking for amps. All right, so you cover up the A with your finger because you're looking for amps. You're left with a W over a V, in other words, watts divided by volts. You've got 150 watts being pushed by 120 volts, so the current flowing through your wire is 150 divided by 120, and I'll let you figure out what that is. Here's the fourth problem. It says you've got a dryer element. That means a, a clothes dryer. This is an electric dryer for drying clothes. It's rated at 4 kilowatts and 240 volts. A kilowatt, K stands for a thousand. So when it says 4 kilowatts, that means the same thing as 4,000 watts. All right, so this dryer element is 4,000 watts. And um, big electric heating elements like you find in stoves and electric dryers don't run on 120 volts. We wire them at 240 volts. So this dryer, it's a 4,000 watt element and we've wired it to the 240 volt circuit. The question is, how many amps does it draw? Because we want to know how big a wire do we need and how big a breaker do we need. All right, you're looking for amps, so you cover up the A with your finger. You're left with a W over a V, a watts divided by volts, and you know that you have 4,000 watts, and it's being pushed by 240 volts. So with your calculator, you'll say, you'll punch in 4,000, divided by 240, and that will tell you how many amps you're drawing, how many amps is getting pulled through that wire. Finally, last slide, I just wanted to show you uh, Ohm's Law. We're not going to work with Ohm's Law, but those of you who might be going on to electrician school, uh, you'll work with Ohm's Law a lot, and this is the law that um, relates voltage, amps, and resistance. So here it is, and you'll see this is from a Millwright's book, and they're using the old uh, P-I-E-E-I-R flavor of the things. All right, there you go.